What's up shooters? Thanks for joining the Eagle's Nest and welcome back. So in this video today, I'm going to show you guys my process and how I loaded up 22 Creedmoor. Now this Savage 110 started out as a 223. I did a bolt head conversion to a 308. I put a link in the top right if you're interested in that. I then slapped on a Excalibur barrel in 22 Creedmoor. Now this is a pre-fit barrel that was uh, made by Excalibur. And um, all topped off with a XRS chassis from MDT. Now this is a new chassis that MDT came out with and I'm pretty impressed. Well, if you guys are interested to see what kind of performance you get out of a 22 Creedmoor, stick around. All right, folks, so we just shot the first 15 shots out of the 22 Creedmoor Savage 110. I'll show you guys the target. Now, the first shot that we did, bore sighting the rifle itself, was here. I then adjusted 1.9. Second shot ended up being right here. Then readjusted uh, 0.2 right and shot a uh, the 41 grain load. Uh, this was this group. Started off with just about an inch, I'd say, on that group there. Um, then I stepped it up to 41 and a half grains of H1000. Uh, you can see the groups are starting to close up. Point of aim was actually right here. Um, and then we stepped it up to 42 grains, shot down here. And that seems to be where the node is coming in. I had accidentally then shot the 43 grains instead of the 42 and a half, but the node I could tell here was starting to open up. And then, the, of course, the last shots uh, of the groups were 42 and a half. So there is definitely between 42 and 42 and a half, there is something uh, going on here as a node. And now that I have some fire form cases, I should be able to accurately see what my max case overall length is, as well as probably tighten up the groups. So we're going to play around with a powder charge around 42 and 42 and a half. Uh, probably go around, I'll say I'll start at 42 and a half um, and play around with a uh, seating depth of the bullet. See if we can tighten this thing up. But seeing the targets as is, not even breaking the rifle in or the barrel in itself, uh, this thing's going to be a shooter. I can already feel it and I can already tell. So taking notes is absolutely critical to developing a really good hand load. With that said, obviously we are working with a clear rifle. And the first thing we want to do is find our max case overall length. Now that we have some fireform cases, uh, we're going to be using these Burger VLD targets. These are 80 grain projectiles. I'm also using the Hornady Custom Grade 22 Creedmoor dies. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is find the max case overall length. And how we're going to do that is punch out the primer using a Lee Universal Decapping die. That way we don't have any false readings with a primer protrusion. Alright, with the primer out the way, we're going to give ourselves a small little crimp. I'm just using the typical wire strippers here that have the uh, barrel crimper on there. And let's give it basically a little small crimp. That way it'll hold the projectile, give it some resistance. Let's see how she feels. So you should be able to insert the projectile, but allow it to actually slide down. So that one has the perfect amount of resistance that I want. Now, I do know that Hornady does make a case overall length gauge. However, um, it does not compensate for the case stretch. Basically, when you fire form your brass, they Hornady case overall length gauge does not compensate for that stretching. That said, it's going to give you a max case overall length without a fire piece of brass. Um, and I can't stress this enough. I always tell folks about this. Yes, it's a good tool. However, you do have to use fire form brass. That thing could actually put you in a very dangerous situation. To give you an example of how it can become dangerous is um, basically like these burger VLDs. If you are an experienced hand loader or do know about these VLDs, um, majority of rifles do like shooting them when they're jammed. With that said, if you're using a Hornady max case overall length gauge, uh, you find your max case overall length and then you resize the brass or for instance you're just um, you know, bump sizing your brass two thousandths or neck sizing and you use that measurement, well you're going to be jamming the lands a hell of a lot more than you think. Uh, like I said, it doesn't compensate for that stretching. Um, so if you're using a max pressure load or you're, you're doing load development, jamming the lands more than you thought, it will definitely give you a very uh, high pressure sign, possibly piercing the primer or damaging your uh, ejector or firing pin. So like I said, you don't need to buy a really expensive tool. Here's a quick little method. Simply get your fire form piece of brass, punch the primer out, give a little crimp on a case mouth, and use your rifle. Alright, so with the projectile barely inserted into the cartridge, we'll go ahead and insert it into the chamber here, very carefully. We'll then go ahead and close the bolt, give it a little pressure, 
cam over and then extract the cartridge. It fell right on top of the mag here. Now we can get a max case overall length, kind of a good uh, estimate of what it is. This one is showing 2.710. So what I like using is a comparator tool. Now you could buy the case comparator set, uh, which utilizes the body and body bushings. And that body itself also can fit your bullet comparators. All right, so the next measurement you wanna get is your first fire case headspace. Now, again, we're using the Hornady comparator tool. I'm using the bushing number 420. That should put put it right at the datum line of this cartridge, well, roughly around that. What I tend to do, what I like to do, is actually get the measurement of the first fired case, and I just next size the brass for the second firing or second loading. That'll give me a more accurate number of the headspace. As you know, brass does have spring back, so the number that you're going to see today is actually not the uh, your chamber spec. It gets you pretty close, however, it isn't your, your headspace measurement to chamber. The most accurate way to doing that is actually um, chamber casting your rifle. Uh, you can use bismuth for that. It's kind of a tedious process. Um, I'll do a video on that at some other time, but this, is, uh, this method here that I'm showing you guys seems to work very well. Now, the first fire case we are seeing uh, here, let's make sure that this thing is zeroed out, first of all. Uh, this is okay. I am showing to be 1.520. Now, I'm going to triple check that with a more accurate dial indicator here. 0 0.520 as well. Uh, you can see that. So we zeroed it out at 2 inches approximately. So 1.520 is what I'm reading here. For those that don't know how to read a dial indicator okay so we're gonna set up a full length size and die and for those that don't follow my channel I do size a little bit different I actually don't bump my brass back so setting up my full length size and die this one has a decapping pin I'm gonna set up this uh, full length size and die to basically go off my headspace comparator measurement that said we're going to utilize the comparator tool again and a test cartridge. So this is a fired piece of brass. Let's see, we're going to back out the die just a little bit here. There we go. 1.520. So what we're going to do now is do a little bullet jump test. What I like to do is start off at 25 thousandths off the lens. Um, like we like we said, we measured the case overall length. Though I like using the comparator bushing measurement itself. We're just going to go off this number. Uh, 2.710. We'll start off at 25 thousandths off the lens. I'll put it at 2.685. All right. So we're going to do a little jump test with the 22 Creedmoor, starting off at 25 thousandths off the lens uh, using H1000. We'll see what this rifle likes and see what kind of results we can get. All right, so 25 thousands off the lands, 15 thousands off the lands. You can definitely see it's starting to tighten up, liking what I'm seeing here. So uh, we'll go ahead. I'm going to attach a magneto speed, actually get a chrono number as well, and um, see what I can get. So first shot was 3,146. Next one was 3,155, then 3,153. I pulled that one a little low. Yep. Yeah, I see that. Shot a little low. 3,158. Yeah, I'm liking these numbers. Last one didn't register for some reason, huh? All right, so losing some daylight, but the last shots to verify this load did a phenomenal group there. Actually, uh, I felt like I pulled that shot as well. I did call it, did uh, 
pull a little low. So this group itself, uh, four shots, uh, this would have been in that group as well. Definitely under uh, half an inch, I'd say just over a quarter. As far as the chrono numbers, uh, this is what I'm getting with that 80 grain projectile. Just over 3,000 feet a second, almost 3,100 feet a second. STs of 4.6, stream spread of eight. So really excited to see what this load could do. Uh, maybe I could get a varmint out here and flay that thing open. 3,000 feet a second, 80 grain VLD bullet is getting it. All right, folks, so that's really all I got. The 22 Creedmoor is an outstanding cartridge. Yeah, it's a barrel burner, but however, the load that I developed today uh, with the velocities and that H1000, it should give me a little bit more case life. But with that powder that I loaded up today, it should give me a little bit more case life. I'm gonna guess around 1200 rounds. Probably start chasing uh, or seeing throat erosion around 800. So, you know, give and take on uh, this cartridge, uh, pushing the velocities it has. You know, if you want the performance of a, I guess, a Magnum cartridge in a short action, uh, 22 Creedmoor will do it. Well, folks, as always, stay safe out there. Stay tuned. I will be doing more testing with this cartridge. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.